This is Twit. So I've been I've been re, I've been rereading uh, the writings of a, of the guy who brought the Gutenberg parenthesis to my mind, Tom Pettit, uh, an academic in Denmark, and and he argues, as you know, don't worry, I'm not going to do it all. That we're reverting back to a pre Gutenberg. Mm-hmm. Era, and that that was an oral-based world rather than a textual-based yeah. world. And what he argues yeah. in that is that was a performance-based world. And what we see happening to a great extent is people are not, we in media think they're creating content. They're not. They're performing. Yeah. And they're performing in ways that shock us because that's part of the point. And they're performing in ways that test borders. And they're performing in ways that, that don't have n- norms yet. Uh, we're returning to an, uh, a society built on orality over textuality, te- te- over, is- over text. And I think it's a kind of a brilliant insight. into. So we're, we're misinterpreting what people are doing. They're not creating, you know, when, we, when we look at what they're doing as of creating content, we say, well, this is crap. How could we allow this? But if we say it's people who are performing and acting out something, that's what our politics are entirely right now. And we've got to judge it against that to figure out what they have to do about it. That is a great point. And I know I've talked to Hossein Darakshan, who's a Iranian blogger, spent six years in prison for blogging. Because of um, yep. He, uh, when he got out, he noticed that the web had changed and he described very much the same thing. His sort of shorthand is that it's becoming like television. Everything is becoming like television. So Twitter's becoming like television. Facebook's becoming like television. Te- television is taking over and not just in the sense of video, but in the sense of a kind of shallowness in a way of, and so his view, obviously as a person who likes text is that <laughs> and video links. in particular, really, really likes his links. Yeah, yeah. And links is that much of this content is um, just shallow and kind of doesn't, it doesn't encourage you to think it encourages you to feel and to feel strong emotions. And that that's, but that's a condescending way to look at it too. I would argue is the problem Maybe. with television was that television was one tube sent out to all of us. And now when you go to my favorite conference, VidCon, what you see is that everyone can make television. The sort of Gutenberg, you know, parenthesis idea, I started thinking about specifically with relationship to Twitter. Twitter is much more a verbal sort of oral kind of performance, if you will, than it is text. It feels like yeah, text because you're tired of YouTube, but too. it's not actually yeah. like and text that's, at all. And that's what some have said is the problem with Twitter is it it you feel like you're doing these off the cuff, you know, water cooler remarks, but they're preserved forever. <laughs> exactly. It's it's in the worst possible kind of gray area between yeah. text and performance. If it weren't for that, we wouldn't know that Jack Dorsey sent beard shavings to Azalea Banks to make an amulet. <laughs> To protect him from ISIS. I got a, someone has got a, like, fact check that story. No, there's a tweet. it feels too good. I know. It feels too good. Yeah. She tweeted. Especially because I don't think he ever shaved his beard, you know, so. Well, you can just take little clippings. You don't need much. The question is, did he ever get the amulet? Apparently he did not. According to the story, he did not. (laughs) This is So he's not protected. New Music Express. Nick actually is from Nick Bilton, right? Nick yeah. re- Nick referred to it in his Vanity Vanity Fair piece on uh, yeah. Jack Dorsey. Uh, Nick's been doing great work covering <laughs> covering Twitter. See, Nick can't quit Twitter, but I can. 